Welcome to Nationwide on the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Kendi Olali. Thanks for joining us. And we begin with the All Progressives Congress Governors Forum, which has conferred an honor on President Muhammad Buhari for his true leadership, commitment to good governance, fight against corruption, and security of lives and property. President Muhammad Buhari assured the forum and Nigerians that the award is appointed to do more and is determined to consolidate on this achievement in the next four years. I view this award as a reflection of the collective commitment of the states and federal government to work harmoniously to find solutions to the developmental challenges facing our country. Economic growth and competitiveness of nations depends on the harmonious collaboration of all the tiers of government, particularly in a federal setup like ours. Hence, against the backdrop of the challenges we have been passing through as a nation arising from past economic and political mismanagement, we must feel justifiably proud to have contributed actively in getting Nigeria back on track in the last four years in human and infrastructure development. Vikiti Bornu, Nasarawa Ogun, Oshun, Oyo, Yobi and Zemfara State were also recognized for their contributions to national development. Marching order has been given to Nigerians and law enforcement agencies to as a matter of urgency for stop public confidence in governance. President Muhammadu Buhari, who gave the order, described the prevailing state of fear and uncertainty and apprehension in the nation's security situation as disturbing and intolerable. This was at a strategic meeting with service chiefs and heads of other security agencies in his office. State House correspondent Adam Sambo has details. This crucial meeting in response to the prevailing challenges of security in parts of the country is the second to be summoned by President Muhammad Buhari in 48 hours. In attendance were the Minister of Defense, the National Security Advisor, Service Chiefs led by the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Defense Intelligence, Acting Inspector General of Police, as well as Director General of the Department of State Services and the National Intelligence Agency. For about three hours behind closed doors, the security chiefs gave account of their various initiatives and interventions to either nip in the bud potential threats to security or confront the various criminal elements now threatening the peace and stability of the country. We recall that um, after the last meeting, various operations were set up, um, both other being one of uh, such um, strategies. There had been a remarkable drop in uh, uh, the number of uh, kidnappings. Uh, what normally would attract attention is when um, the key person in government or perhaps is uh, kidnapped. But um, on the whole, uh, the number of kidnaps, kidnappings has dropped and uh, generally I think the security situation is improving as well. For President Muhammad Buhari, the continuous public outcry over the security situation in the country is a matter of serious concern. The security agencies, he insists, must do whatever it takes towards restoring sense of security across the land and public confidence in governance. He has also given directives that um, the agencies do much more to ensure that um, Nigerians go to bed uh, and wake up. Uh, feeling healthy and confident that um, uh, their security is uh, guaranteed. 
any update on the kidnapped district head of Dora in Kazanastan? Of course, uh, serious efforts have been made. Uh, key suspects have been arrested. And it is hoped that in a short while, uh, those behind uh, that heinous crime will be brought to book. During the meeting, issues relating to the proliferation of small arms and light weapons, as well as its consequences on national security, were thoroughly analyzed and far-reaching measures adopted in the interest of the country. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Still on security matters, troops on exercise Arabin Kunama 3 have arrested a logistics supply for bandit operating between Jibia Bashari Axis. A statement by Acting Director Army Public Relations, Colonel Gashio Musa, indicates that the suspect was arrested at Kashaba village in Jibia local government area of Kasina State. Similarly, based on a tip of troops of 311 artillery regiment conducted a raid on a suspected facility in Kwatangora village township where a local weapons fabricator was arrested. In another encounter following credible information, troops from one division garrison raided a kidnapper's hideout, killed two and recovered two AK-47 rifles in an abandoned farmhouse in Gonan Baturi, east of Rijana and Kashamari in Kuchun local government area of Kaduna State. While troops of uh, 6th Division discovered a legal refining site at Oyakuma community, Adoa West local government area of R River State, and arrested two suspected oil bunkers. While two pipelines vandals and illegal oil bunkers were intercepted along Sapele Wari Road in Sapele local government area of Detour State. The Nigeria Police Force says it is deploying modern technologies as well as working with members of the public to mitigate any criminal activities in the country. The Acting Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamo, stated this during a meeting with officers in charge of the Special anti robbery Squad and Anti-Kidnapping at the Force Headquarters in Abuja. Doi Dia reports. This is the first meeting of the Acting Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, with the officers in charge of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad and Anti-Kidnapping Unit of the Force. A couple of issues are on the table to be addressed, part of which came as a charge and a riot act on indiscipline and the abuse of firearms, some of which have led to the killings of innocent citizens. These unprofessional act actions have led to lack of confidence and trust in the police and this impact on our crime prevention capacity. And any officer that is involved in extrajudicial killing and abuse of power will be held accountable for his or her action and risks losing his job and facing criminal prosecution. It was then time to revisit the security architecture in the country. The trend of crimes which has caused Nigerian sleepless nights, the acting IGP says, called for a rejig of tactics. And so the deployment of some modern technologies, such as closed circuit cameras across major cities, is needed. The police boss says efforts are in top gear to recruit locals for intelligence gathering for effective community policing. In a related development, four Chinese nationals who were recently kidnapped on the 15th of April 2019 in Mobile, Niger State, were safely and successfully rescued on the 5th of May from a forest in Brennan-Gwari, Kaduna State, in Abuja, Doi, Dia, NT News. Although Nigerians express optimism that community policing can improve internal security, they however raise concerns about absence of monitoring and evaluation mechanism to check inherent abuse. In this regard, guests on Good Morning Nigeria call for modification of the existing structural framework in the police force to deepen in implementation of the concept. Alika Okpanachi Arua reports. The concept of community policing has always been desirable considering the value it confers on internal security. Regardless, the fear of many Nigerians is about implementation and likely abuse of power. It is for these reasons that few states in Nigeria are implementing the concepts. 
a recent presidential directive for a nationwide implementation of community policing has generated more public reaction. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria are, however, optimistic about the impact of community policing on internal security, but caution on the implementation framework. Community policy is giving back to the community the power to police itself. Whereas the police as an institution, you know, enforces the law itself. From experience, Nigerians are willing to participate. You know, you just need the opportunity to participate. And one of the things we've done under the Nigerian Policing Program over the past two years having, uh, has been introducing the concept of development of a state policing plan. Establishment of an evaluation mechanism tops the recommendation. Community policing can work once you understand the philosophy of let there be priority for security and safety concerns of the people at the local level and therefore respond to it. It's not only the responsibility of the police to manage quote-unquote community policing. Uh, several stakeholders, including several security organizations, the government itself, members of the society, civil society organizations, our development partners will have to come in. The guests also stressed on the need for community policing personnel to be trained to be responsive and accountable to the community. In Abuja, Alika Oponachi, Arua, NT News. Traditional rulers in Benue State who fail to call conflict in their domains will henceforth face a various degrees of punishment. Governor Samuel Otom stated this at the swearing in of two high court judges for the Benue State Judiciary, which held at the government house Makodi. Correspondent Bem Aya reports. The Governor's Riot Act to traditional rulers is coming against the backdrop of the protracted crisis between the Aguila people of Adol local government area of Benue State and their Ebonyi state neighbors, which led to the beheading of four persons recently. Governor Otom said the second class chief of Aguila has the option of producing the perpetrators of the crime or face suspension and eventual prosecution. While administering the oath of office to the two judges elect, Mrs. Masawangi Odinya and Mr. Ibrahim Mohammed, the governor commended judges for the invaluable role they play in the society. He called on the National Judicial Service Commission to review the salaries of judges as he pledged his commitment to the separation of powers, as well as the determination to assist the judicial arm of government at all time. Since the discipline, payment of salaries and allowances of judges, amongst other issues, are being centrally controlled by National Judicial Service Commission, it is logical that the pensions of retired state judges too be handled by it. We are grateful for the support and friendship of our brother judges, both serving and retired. Until their appointments, the two were directors in the Benue State Judiciary. In Makudi, Bem Hanya, NTA News. It's time to join Jennifer in Lagos for latest stories happening in that zone. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you, Kindy. Welcome to Lagos. Now, bodies of two bureau de change operators who were kidnapped about two months ago in the Korodu area of Lagos have been exhumed for autopsy. Jessica Moses reports that two other corpses were also discovered in the septic tank where the strangled victims were deposited. It was 14th of March 2019 in Nikorodu. Two Burodo Chan operators, Musa Yakubu from Kebi State and his colleague Umaru Hassan, were invited through telephone call for a transaction, which unknowingly to them will be their last. They were kidnapped and stripped of $10,000 and families forced to pay ransom to the tune of 1.6 million naira. After doing the transaction, they kidnapped my dad and I called on that to pay 1.6 if we want them to release my dad. In fact, my brother did the transfer 1.6 that same night. And they just tied them, a tip on their hands and their mouth. So that is how they killed them. So they just carried them and threw them to that um, 
It was a shocking discovery to find out on arriving the venue of the Carlos Act for both the police and team of pathologists to find out that two other corpses were hidden in a septic tank in the abandoned premises. We are looking uh, at the building and we are looking at uh, more places. We are seeing more clothes. We have found more clothes. Uh, clothes. That means we are likely to have uh, more victims that uh, we are killed in this place. It is also highly disappointing to find out that the abandoned premises is situated adjacent to a functional tomato factory in Nodogunyo in Nekorodu. The abandoned hectares of fence premises has for years served as a hideout for the evildoers in Lagos. Jesuta Moses, NTA News. Now, the information communication technology sector contributes about 11% to the nation's GDP. And key players say the nation has a large number of youngsters with untapped skills in ICT, which is why the continent is yet to be at par with her contemporaries. To turn the tide is why the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry is organizing the fifth edition of Information Communication Technology Expo. Amakawu report. Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry says the Information Communication Technology Expo 2019 scheduled to hold from the 16th to 17th July will provide opportunities for technology startups to network and buy latest trends in ICT. We want to look at where we are, what are those things that are inhibiting our achieving our potentials where we should be. The theme of the expo is the fourth industrial revolution, the Nigerian story. We in this expo want to bring the larger community face to face with this reality of artificial intelligence, how it's now affecting domestic and industrial life. But we are creating this platform for our youth, the, the startup, so that they'll be able to express themselves. And those who need to discover them will be available to know where to invest. Organizers and other key players say mechanisms are in place to evaluate success stories after the expo as discoveries will be considered in the process of policy making in Nigeria, like the inclusion of new models of ICT in schools curriculum. I want to leverage our very strong uh, impact and effect in public policy advocacy to ensure that we get the curriculum to be in alignment with what is contemporary. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry assured key players of increasing efforts towards assembly and local production of ICT infrastructure in the country. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. Now those are the stories from Lagos, others are. Nationwide continues after this commercial break. Stay with us. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us. In yet another effort towards improving the welfare of inmates and the Nigerian prison service, some operational vehicles and facilities have been inaugurated at the headquarters of the service in Abuja. Victor Azu reports. Delay in justice dispensation in Nigeria is attributed to many factors. Late arrival or even non-appearance of prison inmates to court is one of them. The reason is usually because of inadequate operational vehicles by the Nigerian prison service to convey inmates. However, this scenario is changing with ongoing reforms. The Minister of Interior arrives to a guard of honor at the Nigerian prison service. It's another busy day. He is here to inaugurate 115 operational vehicles and other facilities meant to improve the capacity of the Nigerian prison service. The minister recognizes the value these facilities confer on the prison staff and inmates' relationship. We have shifted focus from the crime to the criminal. We are not looking at the fact that somebody violated a particular law and he must be punished for it. But we are also looking at the way that this person is a human being and he has the capacity to change. 
The driver of the initiative, Controller General of Prisons, Jafar Ahmed, says the inauguration is part of ongoing reforms to deepen its rehabilitation and reintegration goals. The projects and vehicles being commissioned are part of the priority projects being undertaken in prison formations across the Federation with a view to enhancing effectiveness and efficiency in the area of service delivery. And in the end, for Jafar Ahmed, the legacy will not only be the physical projects, but the lives of inmates, which ultimately get better. In Abuja, Victor Azu, NTA News. Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire and Gambia are enjoying relative peace in the ECOWAS sub-region. Joseph Oruk reports that this were the views of members of parliament who represented their countries and presented the report to the ordinary session of the sub-region legislature in Abuja. In line with the ECOWAS protocols promoting peaceful coexistence and integration of the people of the sub-region, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire reports points to a relative very low index of crime rates and security in the countries. Ghana, according to the Member of Parliament from that country, will by 2020 have its citizens living abroad to vote in its main election. This is because the National Electoral Commission of the country has instituted country representation of the People's Amendment Acts passed into law 12 years ago. On the other hand, Côte d'Ivoire has dissolved its National Election Commission and have improved its security index in recent times. The country member of parliament further says Côte d'Ivoire has also recently ratified the African Free Trade Agreement. The signing of the amnesty decree by the president has boosted the rate of voluntary return. As we speak, majority of Ivorian exiles have returned to the country. During the period, the parliament of Ghana in March 2019 passed the right to information bill into law. This will give the media and the people of Ghana unfettered access to information from public institutions. For Gambia, the security situation is also said to be improving with several reforms to reposition the country. The security situation in the Gambia continue to improve. The economic forces continue to play an important role by ensuring peace and safety of all the citizens. Do the country's reports attracted comments from members of parliament? Other ECOWAS countries are to present their reports before the parliaments in due course. In Abuja, Joseph Orok, NTA News. Nigeria and Angola have agreed to increase cooperation in areas of trade, investment, security and economic diversification. This followed the meeting between Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Oyama and his Angolan counterpart Manuel Augusto in Abuja. Foreign Desk Correspondent Makud Simon Macha reports. 30 years ago, the path of Geoffrey Oyama and Dominos Augusto crossed while they were young diplomats representing their countries abroad. Today, they are meeting in Abuja as foreign ministers representing their countries at the highest level of diplomacy. The center of their conversation is all about improving relations between Nigeria and Angola, two African oil giants who are facing similar economic challenges. After a closed-door meeting, the two ministers emerged to sign a memorandum of understanding that talks about convening the Nigeria-Angola Joint Commission to consolidate on areas of mutual interest. This uh, is a reflection of the, uh, your visit here, of the close cooperation between our two countries, two countries that have a lot in common, uh, big oil-producing countries uh, and uh, rich in other uh, mineral resources. Um, and great potential, but um, uh, at the moment, of course, facing uh, economic challenges and uh, the need for economic diversification. So we must give content to this uh, um, instrument of, uh, of uh, strengthening our, uh, our bilateral uh, relations. They also resolved to follow up on the bilateral air service agreement signed recently between the two countries. In Abuja, Makut Simon Macham, NTA News. Nigeria is now promoting smart initiatives in the country, basically to grow smart enabled resources and build a vibrant 
developed smart data economy. In line with this objective, the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, is now creating an enabling environment to support a variety of self-grown smart innovations from the Nigeria Smart Initiative Policy Framework, now presented for stakeholders' engagement. Justin Bem, reports. It is believed that Nigeria cannot rely on meeting her national vision on sustainable economic development through the conventional policies, approaches and tools. Consequently, relevant stakeholders are of the opinion that the nation needs to make the best use of her innovative potential through a well-thought-out Nigeria smart policy framework for promoting smart initiatives. The future of the world economy the experts are now saying the development and use of smart solutions and applications are capable of increasingly creating unimaginable values and disrupting every aspect of society with innovations that improve human existence. Smart initiatives is all about digital economy. So For the federal the government, the imperative here is that Nigeria cannot continue to run a catching up race in this critical sector. And the wisdom behind coming up with this framework is to make sure that, first and foremost, we provide a platform for research and development in smart initiatives, in addition to creating awareness. There is a call now that supporting the development of smart initiatives is very important in Nigeria, especially to those in the technology industry. And there is a desire to see homegrown smart initiatives become an integral part of Nigerian development agenda. This is in helping the society to be more responsive to social needs in critical sectors such as security, environment, health and education. In Abuja, Justin Bem Unyi, NTA News. He just brought rain in action planned on women, peace and security towards reducing the suffering of the vulnerable population in conflict situation. Took the center stage of discussion between Benue State and the Norwegian government representatives. This was during a visit by the deputy head of mission, Norwegian Embassy, Abuja, Nigeria, to the deputy governor of Benue State, Benson Abono, at the government house in Makodi. Ben Aya reports. Over time, Benue State has been in the news due to security challenges that have led to the loss of lives and displacement of many. Studies have shown that when these crises occur, women and children are the worst hit. It is to mitigate the hardship conflicts have on these vulnerable population that the Norwegian government seeks to partner the Benue State government in a pilot program that will involve four local government areas spread across the three senatorial zones in Benue State. We are, are uh, so pleased uh, to be here and looking very much forward to the collaboration uh, on this uh, moving on further. State Deputy Governor Benson Abonu commended the efforts of the government and people of Norway towards the peace and security of the state and pledged the determination of the state government to be dedicated to the project. The state deputy governor decried the humanitarian situation facing many communities in the state occasioned by sustained attacks by gunmen and called on the international community to assist the state in finding lasting peace. It's a novel idea that um, you are getting women to get involved, actively involved, uh, in shaping the security situation of their own country. In Makudi, Bem Hanya, NTA News. The promotion of political stability and equity in governance by the Nigerian Television Authority is being cherished by Women Governance, a non-governmental organization. It is on this light that women in governance now solicit and his support in propagating women inclusiveness in politics. Rachel Shaibo tells us more. Women made up 47% of registered voters in the 2019 general elections, but only 8% were cleared to vie for electoral positions during the polls. This has become worrisome and a source of concern to gender activists within and outside the country. This group of women 
came to NTA to talk about the Pandora box women are sitting on in politics and to seek support to ensure that Nigeria attains her rightful position in the League of Nations through gender equity and respect for women and girls. So this is the right time to start talking about it. We can't be moving backward at a speed and not talking about it and sitting down thinking it will be okay. We need to start talking about the future of our culture, the future of our society today. Executive Director of Finance Fatima Bada says NTA is a gender-friendly organization and is ready to support any effort geared towards gender equality. We, as uh, a media organization, we are ready to go all the way to support you, give you the necessary support, you know, in terms of dissemination and uh, taking it as far as all the nooks and crannies of Nigeria. Records have shown that women in leadership positions have demonstrated quality skills, discipline and strength in carrying out their duties for the development of Nigeria. In Abuja, Rachel Shaibu, NTA News. The danger of scooping spilled fuel is one of the updates we'll be getting from our Enugu Network Center and Comfort is our guide. Hello, Comfort. Thank you, Kende, and welcome to Enugu. Enugu State Governor Ifani Ugwani has approved the construction of two model customary courts for each of the 17 local government areas of the state. He made the, the disclosure during the swearing in of the three high court judges and of appeal judge following their recommendations by the National Judicial Council, NJC. Chika Ugu completes the report. Governor Uguayi pointed out that his administration has reached many milestones in its continual efforts to reposition the state's judiciary for more efficient service, especially through the provision of suitable infrastructure and essential tools and equipment. The governor also disclosed that renovation work has commenced at the state judiciary headquarters, among other interventions, expressing optimism that those measures, coupled with the appointment of new judges, would help to enhance the efficient administration and speedy dispensation of justice in Enugu State. And the construction of the High Court complex at the Soka Judicial Division, construction of 14 new court buildings and local registries for Judicial Division and managerial districts across the three central zones. The, the new High Court judges who were sworn in at the ESCO chambers of the government house, Enugu State, included Justice Chinedu Ezugu, Chiwike Ogunabo, and Matt. While Justice Nena Cecilia Mad, who was sworn in as a judge of the customary court of appeal, Governor Uguanyi said the action was in compliance with Section 271, Subsection 2 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended, which provides that the appointment of a judge of the High Court of a state shall be made by the governor acting on the recommendation of the NJC. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. Enugu State House of Assembly has adopted a uniformed house standing order as a fair working document for all the houses of assembly in Southeast. Idioma Ugwoke has the details of the house proceedings. The need to harmonize the legislative business in the five houses of assembly in the southeast formed the basis of the inauguration of the Committee on Legislative and Governance Reform. The chairman of the committee and leader in the State House of Assembly, Ikechuku Ezubu, while presenting the report of the committee for adoption, stressed that the legislative institution requires serious reform in order to function more effectively, unite and develop the zone. Uh, the uniform standing order presented before us. Some 
of the agreed priority, according to the committee chairman, ah, House of Assembly Service Commission, uniform standing order, self-assessment, and constituency engagement. Others are generic oversight functions, periodic peer review and exchange programs, collaboration with the media, and capacity building. The speaker, Engu State House of Assembly, after the adoption of the report, congratulated the committee for a job well done. The the uniform house standing order for Southeast House of Assembly after adoption takes effect from 20 June 2019 in Enugu Ijomu Gweke, NTA News. There are rising incidents of Nigerians who result to scooping of fuel from accidental tankers for gains. What is the fate of such people and the way out? Francis Opala has been speaking with experts in Enugu. It has become a common sight for people to take advantage of incidents of accidental tankers carrying fuel. Many a time, you see a moment crowd of people scooping fuel from the scene of the incident. One of the cases that made national news Jesse in Delta State, where a whole community was literally raised down in 1998, when indigenes turned the scene of a broken fuel pipe to a business venue where they sell the fuel that was spilled in the accident. Despite the calamity that occurred during the incident, there are several reports over the years of citizens still engaging in the act. Anything can happen. Uh -huh. Anything like catching fire uh -huh, or even more to have an accident can occur, so it's not proper. The oil that fell is being owned by someone or a station. So uh, the act of vandalization is illegal by scooping the oil. Experts advise that being around a spilled fuel or an accidented fuel tanker is dangerous as it is highly inflammable. If there is any fire outbreak, it, the fire will go with the, the, the passage or the pathway created by that uh, running fuel that is falling out from a fuel tank. Experts warn that government or owners of the accidented tankers that result to fuel spillage can never be held responsible or accountable for any damage or death resulting from scooping. As inferno resulting from activities of an accidented tanker is classified as disaster in Enugu. Francis Obala, NTA News. And that was our contribution from Enugu is back to Kende in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Comfort. And we'll take a short break now. More news when we return. Don't go away. Thank you for being there. The Federal Road Safety Corps is synergizing with the Nigerian Army Work College in order to create a better path for a safe and secure Nigeria. This was during the visit of the Nigerian Work College participant of Course 3 2019 to the FRSC headquarters in Abuja. Oyemi Ajayi has details. This is not a raid, but an unusual visit of participants of the Nigerian Army War College from different military and paramilitary formations including those from other countries like Cameroon. Expectedly, the visit is to further synergize relationship between the Federal Safety Corps and the Nigerian War College, but more importantly, is a desire to foster better working relations through exchange of notes. And of course, joint training that we have going between, of course, us and you, having your personnel with us, will, of course, improve synergy in a multi-agency and joint environment. We have actually been treated to so much this day, and I can tell you that learning has actually occurred. So we want to appreciate you. So that next year, another group will also come. With questions from the 66 participants on how the Corps has achieved major milestones, it becomes clear that there is the need for better cooperation amongst military and paramilitary agencies in order to have better outputs. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NT News. 
the 18th Director General of the National Youth Service Corps, NYC, Brigadier General Shahibu Ibrahim, has taken over from Major General Suleiman Kazari with a promise to sustain effective utilization of the potential of a youth corps members, as well as pursue a technologically driven organization. Olainka Ojo reports. He became the 17th headship of the NYSC in April 2016 as a brigadier general, but he is leaving as a major general to the Nigerian Army Resource Center, Abuja. Major General Suleiman Kazauri is the first director general of the NYSC to head the scheme as a major general. His stewardship in the last three years was hinged on focal areas of enhanced welfare, security of core members, and expanding the side program of the NYSC. Now it is time to say goodbye, and Major General Kazauri appreciates the staff and management. As the new Director General takes over today, I enjoy to accord him the same level of cooperation and support. The new NYC Director General, Brigadier General Shwaibu Ibrahim, acknowledged the successes of his predecessor and thanked the government for finding him worthy to steer the ship of the more than 45 years old scheme. He promised to ensure that the ideals of the NYC are further pursued as well as consolidate on the achievements of his predecessors. Sure on practices and corruption, teamwork and fairness to all will be my watchword. Brigadier General Shwaibu Ibrahim, who is a former registrar Army University Bureau, Borno State, hails from Nasara local government area of Nasara State. Brigadier General Shwaibu Ibrahim, the 18th Chief Executive of the NYSC, now on his second sojourn, was the military assistant to Brigadier General Dooley when he was the Director General of the NYSC between 1996 and 1998. In Abuja, Olayin Kaoju, NTA News. In out to judiciary matters, four interlocutory appeals filed by Justice Walter Nonge during a tendency of his trial at the Code of Conduct Tribunal have all been struck out by the Court of Appeals sitting in Abuja. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okeo reports. In order to put these four interlocutory appeals in their proper context, one would have to go back in time to the various pronouncements and activities during the trial of Justice Walter Onogen at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. For each pronouncement made by the Code of Conduct Tribunal from the 14th of January when the six-count charge were fired against Justice Walter Onogen, the legal team of the SY Chief Justice of Nigeria fired interlocutory appeals. First to be determined by the three-member Court of Appeal panel led by Justice Stephen Ada was the ex parte order of the 23rd of January which asked Justice Walter Onogen to stand aside as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. For that, the court said it was a spent appeal already overtaken by events even though the court agreed that the processes of securing the ex parte order raised fundamental questions. The Court of Appeal said delving into the propriety of the order would also interfere with the substantive appeal, which was still before the Court of Appeal. The next interlocutory appeal was the bench warrant issued by the Court of Conduct Tribunal, which was actually never executed, and as such was also struck out too. On the orders of the Federal High Court, National Industrial Court, and the FCT High Court, which ordered the CCT to stay proceedings pending the examination of some matters before the courts, the Court of Appeal said in the light of the provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, criminal trials were not meant to be stayed in order not to cause a delay in criminal trials. The Court of Appeal, however, frowned at the tribunal sitting as an appellate court over the orders of Federal High Court, National Industrial Court, and the FCT High Court. Now, with the interlocutory appeals done with, the, what is left is now for the Court of Appeal to determine the main appeal coming from the main judgment of the Code of Conduct Tribunal over Justice Walter Onogen. And that will be determined as soon as arguments are taken before the Court of Appeal. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NTA News. 
and also education. Larger and researchers have again expressed confidence in their ability to solve contemporary and emerging problems if provided with conducive environment to work. This was expressed at a briefing by Academic Staff Union of Nigerian Research Institution in Abuja, where they urged President Mohamed Buhari to sign the National Innovation Council Bill 2019 into law. Abdullah Musa Suleja reports. There is no nation that has developed without leveraging on science and technology with research as the driving force. With more than 150 research and development institutions and centers as well as universities, Nigeria, many believe, should have been better than how it is today if these institutions operate as required. Despite reviewing the National Policy on Science and Technology initiated in 1966 starting times, there seems to be little impact. The belief of Nigerian researchers in their ability to do better led to the passage of the National Innovation Council Bill 2019, which is awaiting presidential assent. Research and training activities are self-funded by researchers because they must acquire higher degrees and produce research publications before they can be promoted at every stage of their careers. The, this bill provides for the institutional research and training funding mechanism and infrastructural development for research and development institutions in Nigeria. There are, however, differences between researches carried out by the institutions and those in universities. The concept of academic freedom allows lecturers free choice of research endeavors, which oftentimes are not targeted at the development needs of the nation. In research institutions, the research mandates and development objectives are well defined and focused. With the gray areas pointed out by the executive addressed, the union hopes assent to the bill will come to pass in the near future. Abdullah Musa Suleja, NTA News. Chairman of the Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiro Rawa, says the commission will work closely with Nigerians around the world to encourage investment back home, as well as facilitate foreign direct investment into the country. Abike Dabiro was speaking when she met a group of Nigerians from Canada. Foreign desk correspondent Makut Salman Macha reports. This group of Nigerians in Canada is passionate about Nigeria and wants to do everything possible to attract investment by foreigners and Nigerians alike. Their meeting with the chairman of the Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabri Erewa, is in anticipation of positive results. It's our pride that we want to encourage a lot of investment coming to Nigeria. And the best way we in diaspora can do this is by organizing this type of investment summit. Mr. President has created a commission that we have been asking for over the years, and we have our sister as Shama, so she will guide us how to go about it, how to get government support. We want to see reality. Yeah, we want to see investments coming back to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Those who participated in our summit last time, some of them have stayed back. Mm -hmm. A lot have gone, have gone into agriculture. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Diaspora Commission has also met with veteran film producer Wale Adenuga on how to generate content that can project Nigerians doing great things around the world. This day we see a lot of negative news flying around about Nigeria. It's time we put an end to it. The only way you can fight such negative news is by producing positive news about Nigeria. We have Nigeria doing beautifully well abroad. In Abuja, Makut Simon Macham. NT News. And out of spot. Third Chief of Defense Staff Maritain Logo unveiled in Abuja as Nigeria Aquatic Federation plans to train young swimmers for tomorrow's glory. Let's join Tamara Ibi for details. <laughs>